Well, joining me now from Portland, Oregon, is Micah White, a founder of the Occupy Wall Street movement, and in the studio, Lord Skidelsky, the economic historian and biographer, of course, of John Maynard Keynes, and Guardian columnist Hadley Freeman. Micah, I'll begin with you, if I may. Um, Occupy Wall Street perhaps came a little bit too soon. Is this the moment for street protests to change the face of politics? Well, actually, I think that what we're seeing is that street protest is broken. I think that the realization that we're having is that we've been spending years, I mean, Black Lives Matter, three years, and we've been, since Occupy Wall Street's five years, of doing these street protests that we're now seeing don't work. I think that we need to start developing a way of using street protests in order to actually gain sovereignty rather than just creating disruptions. I think that's the real realization. So, in a way, then, perhaps Donald Trump stole some of your shtick. He, he, he kind of managed to harness that populist feeling, but there was a, a proper uh, a political destination at the end of it. I think that's right. I think that Occupy Wall Street basically represented this nascent possibility for the left and the right to work together. And you saw a lot of right-wing people in, in Occupy. But when, when the progressive elite basically smashed our movement, you know, the left wing went towards more street protests like Black Lives Matter, and the right wing went towards uh, a populist maverick candidate. And in the end, the electoral strategy was correct. These street protests haven't gotten us any closer to having, to, to having power, whereas backing an uh, 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 electoral strategy actually works. So now I think that the left is, has to figure out how to use social movements to win elections. That's the real challenge that we're at right now. How, so, do, we, how do we sweep elections in two years? Uh, an American Podemos, then, or Syriza, perhaps? Absolutely, or Five Star Movement. Basically, the, the idea is using the, the techniques of social movement creation, using the techniques of decentralized decision making to figure out how do we, how do we build a move, a, an actual people's movement that can win elections in this country. That is the absolute greatest task that we need right now. And I think that, that Donald Trump represents a kind of revolutionary wake up call to all the people in the streets for them to, to, to basically, you know, let's, 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 Let's innovate, guys. Okay. we got to do more than just street protests. Micah, thank you. Um, Hadley Freeman, you lost Get Over It, is, is, is one of the uh, slogans being chanted. Admittedly, some of the people chanting it are waving Confederate flags <laughs> that refer back to a war they lost in 1865. But the message is, well, it's got momentum, hasn't it? It's certainly got momentum. But the idea that people should just get over that underestimates what this election is. This is not a normal election. This is the election of a president who's endorsed by the KKK, who's announced as his chief strategist, the head of Breitbart News. Now, I've already seen in one of the British newspapers tomorrow a columnist describing Breitbart News as merely, a, you know, merely a media outlet that fights against Islamic, uh, Islamic, uh, uh, sort of, you know, terrorism. violence and terrorism. Yes. Um, and that's the only reason it's called racist. That's not the reason it's called racist. It's because it has articles saying that immigrants bring disease to America. It's because it's an anti-Semitic publication. This should not be treated as a normal election. People should be angry and but protesting. It, it's a very normal election in the sense that it delivered a, a, a clear victor. Well, yes. That it, is normalizing his victory, whether you like it or not. Absolutely. But most elections don't then result in the KKK holding victory parades through America. There are a lot of comments um, involving accusations of fascism, Robert Skidelsky. Do, do you think they hold any water? I don't think they do. I don't think this is a fascist uh, takeover or even the beginning of one. I think the circumstances are very, very different and America is very, very different. I and mean, first of all, America has a, a constitution. And although the president may appear very, very powerful abroad, uh, within America uh, uh, itself, his powers are quite, her powers are quite limited. Uh, everybody will hope you're right. Of course they will. But why do you think so many fascists think he is one of them? Um, well, I, we're, we're, in, we're into problems of definition here. I think uh, what 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 well, uh, I mean, uh, just uh, yeah. briefly, the fellow yeah. who came up with this phrase "alt right" uh, and, and some of the people yeah. that Hadley has mentioned, the, the fellow who came up with the phrase "alt right," I think, has said today that a lot of the people wearing um, Trump baseball caps might as well have been sporting swastikas. Yeah, but they didn't have a chance to support swastikas, and, the, and, the, and that's why they don't support them. I mean, you have to judge everything by, its, by the circumstances, uh, the country in which these... There is a common movement, there's a common disenchantment with what, what, what are called the liberal elites, and that takes you know different what I mean? forms. And do, do I know what that means? Well, one, 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 one definition was the financial elite and Wall Street, but there's also maybe liberal cultural attitudes, and there's also the feeling that um, the liberals have let down 
brown people, that they've, they've left a lot of the country behind. They've treated them with contempt. They haven't, they haven't taken any, any, any real... Uh... And they haven't changed their lives. It's an overreaction, then, Hadley Freeman. I think we need to be very careful about this idea that this is a fight back against the elite. I mean, this is a man who's a, man, who's a Manhattan billionaire, who's worked with Wall Street for decades, who ran on a campaign that victimized minorities, women, LGBT and Jewish people. The idea that this is a fight against the elites is erroneous. It's the oldest prejudices in the world repackaged with a new name of alt-right. So, Robert, I'm thinking Hadley sees this as, as, as scorched earth, in a sense as a danger that, that, that liberal democracy is, is to be brought to, to, to a flattened earth. You, if I'm understanding you correctly, you see it more as an opportunity perhaps to, to knock the house down and then rebuild something even better well, with the surviving yeah. bricks and mortar. Not knock the house down. I mean, I don't think you can ever deliberately will uh, a total disruption of a society. He's kind of I mean, said of he's going to, hasn't he, in a way? Well, you, you know, you, you, you've, got to, you've got to wait to see what he does. I, I think he'll be hemmed in by a lot of uh, restraints. I, he hasn't got behind him the kind of militarised uh, political mm. party that these fascist groups have, and that's why it's quite dangerous to use the word fascist about them. Fascism was, in a, in a particular history, the mood may be very, very different, but it uh, may, may, may be the same, but its expression is different. And that is hugely important. Um, and in America, uh, particularly, there's nothing like uh, any organised fascism. What you have is a president who many, many people think had a lot of crazy views, deeply unpleasant views in many respects, but also has economic policies that make sense to a lot of people. OK, but very briefly, can you think of any examples from history of someone who's risen to power on a racist ticket and then and turned out to be less racist once they'd achieved power? Um, well, you, 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 I'm putting you on the spot. It's probably not fair. On, yeah. I, I mean, I'll, get, I'll give yeah, you another yeah, I chance. Do, I do, yeah. actually. I, I do, I, I can think would. of people. I, God, God, yeah, I God. mean, one very, very uh, well-known person from history was the mayor of Vienna, um, who was elected on a very anti-Semitic platform before the First World War, uh, ended up by appointing lots of Jews to his administration, declared, I, and said, I, I decide who's a Jew. See, OK. That's, that's, was... that's, that's why you're the Lord. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Michael, back to you, if I may. The, the poignant moment in one of our films earlier, I saw a young woman describe people of colour feeling now as if their lives in America are worth less than she thought they were before. Is, is, is that a little um, hysterical? I don't think it's hysterical, and actually I take a, uh, a lot of issue with what your other guest was saying. I think that people misunder mis misunderestimated Trump uh, during his campaign, misunderestimated him during the election, and now they want to you know, say he's not going to be as bad as he says during his presidency. I think that actually the situation is much darker than anyone is really talking about. I think that, that he is a racist and he is a misogynist, and I think that he's a maverick and an unpredictable person. So I think that what we need to do moving forward, though, is imagine, well, how are the people going to gain power? Rather than just complaining about it or, or arguing with who's to blame, I think we need to take it very seriously, but in order to take it seriously, we need to actually create a plan what, what for what capturing if, I'm sorry sovereignty. to interrupt you, but, but what if the people have just gained power? I don't know. The difference here is that what we have put into power is an authoritarian leader who believes that his will is the correct will. What we learned during Occupy Wall Street and what we're learning with Podemos and the Five Star Movement is that we want to create a, a political party that gives power actually to the people so that they can make decisions as a group. If Donald Trump was talking about holding nationwide town hall meetings or community gatherings to decide what should we do moving forward, I'd be all about it. I mean, I love anti-establishment. I think he's absolutely right about so much stuff. But where he's wrong is how power will function in America. It's a regression to give power to an authoritarian in America. Very briefly, is there anything he could do quite quickly that would reassure you? Absolutely. I think that if he didn't just do lip service to populism, but actually gave started to articulate a vision of populist democracy, like where we have town hall meetings, where we have you know discussions among the community, and where he says that his power won't be uh, you know just him deciding at the top, but instead that he is going to imagine a new form of democracy okay. moving forward that that ousts the elites. Uh, uh, Michael, thank you. Hadley, can, are you reassured by that? Is there anything that would reassure you further? Uh, what would reassure me further is if he wasn't having Steve Bannon working for him as his chief strategist. I mean, for his first move to be to be hire the guy from Breitbart News. I mean, that's just a kick in the face to all of Trump's apologists who say he'll be a different president than he was a candidate. He has proved he's going to be exactly the president that okay. he was as a candidate. Mika White, Hadley Freeman, Lord Skidelsky, many thanks indeed for your time.